Um, hey guys, uh, today I will be talking about my project that I did for Vision Tech. And what I did is I made an HDR panorama. And this is the uh, final version right here. <clears throat> um, I'll talk about the steps that I did to go through it. I'll try to keep the language simple, uh, especially for the photography stuff. For me, it's kind of easy to kind of get carried away, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible. All right, so as you probably know, a panorama is when you take multiple photos and put and combine them into Photoshop to stitch them together to get a stretched out image. Pretty simple, okay. So I got the idea of doing a panorama of downtown. So I first went out and I did a couple attempts and I think I went nine photos wide and just one photo high. You can you can stitch vertically and horizontally. I just went um, horizontally on this just because that many layers can get kind of complicated. And then when I'm talking about HDR, it means high dynamic range. And this means when you combine multiple exposures together in Photoshop and merge that same image you haven't it's it's the exact same image you haven't you haven't stacked them you, you you stack them and there's no it's just the same image and you take the highs and lows exposure and I will show you on here so a good example I hope you can see this is um here if it'll load just a second is the first image and you can see that that is the HDR version what it is is it's the three different exposures combined together and what it really does is help get the the mids and highs and just really gets them to pop and kind of contrast well otherwise your images can get kind of bland so I'll take a low exposure and here here's a low exposure this is to get all the the darks and the the mid tones in the image and when you first look at it before you throw it in Photoshop to combine it it looks pretty odd so when you when you set up to take the picture what you can do on I'm not I'm a, I'm a Canon guy so I don't really know about on Nikon's but it's called exposure bracketing so when you go in your menu on your Canon DSLR and I know you can do this on Nikon but it's probably named something different so I won't try to explain that from the Nikon side but you go to exposure bracketing in your menu and then you can set your your uh, parameters of how how many steps of light is above or below so you set it on a tripod just to make sure it doesn't move otherwise it won't work and you take it you snap the image and it'll take three different images so it takes underexposed like this it'll take an overexposed image like that to get the the uh, midtones and the brights a lot better and yeah it looks really washed out and looks unusable so don't worry because the first time I did HDR I was looking through my camera at them and I, I figured that I'd already did something wrong so this is the normal exposure and you can see that in the background is kind of washed out it's also based on the depth of field so once you get those you go into Photoshop let's just drag these three over to your desktop so then you can pull up your Photoshop and excuse my computer it's a little bit slow So once this starts loading, after this loads, I'll show you the next step of what to do to start. Um, it's called Photo Merge, or I think it's Merge to HDR Pro. Of course, I get the spinning wheel of death. <laughs> All right, so just a second while this loads up. So go to 
think it's under file. And then you go to automate and you'll see merged HDR Pro. So you'll click on this and then you go to your browse, so wherever you put them on your desktop or whatever else. Um, let's cancel out of this for a second. Sorry about that. All right. So once you go to open, what you want to do is you want to go to your desktop or wherever you put the pictures, and then you want to select each one. So that's one, the first image. So then to two, second image. Then to browse, and you pull up your third image. And you can also do HDR with more exposures, and that'll just get um, a lot more depth and detail when you do more exposures. I've messed with five, but some people go seven, nine, even 11 steps of exposure. And it's really, um, in this image that I did for my panorama, it didn't really show off what it can, what HDR can do just because of how I shot it. But if you do it when you go, say, take a picture of like a sunrise or a sunset, sometimes all you'll get is the sun itself and it'll kind of overpower everything. Like there might be a nice cloud shadow, but what your camera takes is, isn't what your eye always sees. So this can really, HDR can really bring those, all the colors out and help merge them. So we'll let this run for a second. And with HDR, it can kind of file to file images can get really big. So it can be kind of frustrating. And especially after on my panorama, um, I eventually had to move computers just because it was so big. And I don't know why it's doing this. I guess it's just loading. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, it is one combined image. So all the three exposures are together and locked. So it gives nice detail on the trees. And the background is blurred out, but that is my depth of field. I was shooting, I think, at, oh, what was it? F, F2.8 or F4 on a 70 to 200. And this gives a really big um, depth of field. And that was one effect that I was going to do. And I will show you once I, once this finishes loading, I'll, I'll pull up my panorama again and explain what my concept and idea was to kind of give it a little, I call it a focus shift. And this was something that I'd messed around with a little bit. And I think once I show it to you, just zoom in on it, you can kind of understand what I was doing. So Photoshop's being slow as normal. <laughs> and that is the basics of HDR. So you can do it with just any image and you can even, if you wanted to, even if you didn't have uh, a higher end DSLR, you could um, do it as long as you have a tripod and a camera that you can adjust your exposure and to make sure it's the same image three times, four, five, whatever, whatever number you want of exposures, you can do that. So I do not, there we go. Hopefully this will load. Okay, and then as you can tell, there it is. And then when you get into this, you can change a bunch of stuff like the presets. Usually I'll leave it at custom, but there's a whole bunch of um, other options like flat. We'll let that load and show you what it looks like. I don't really like it, it's kind of bland. And you can go monochromatic. It's just a whole bunch of different effects. And I mean, there's so many different things you can do with it. And yeah, it can be frustrating just because of what the options are. So don't, when you're first doing it, it's very time consuming. So don't, don't get frustrated if it doesn't get what you want. Excuse me. Oops, wrong tab. All right. so. 
here I will be showing you the uh, focus shifts if this will be fine the spinning wheel of death alright so we'll start over here and you can see like I showed on the HDR tutorial right here is that's in focus and even the car because the depth of field is so shallow that even the car that is close behind is way off so you look at the sign back here and even by the tree I took two one one image here that's actually three because it is HDR and another one here and then when my zone shifted as you can tell it looks blurry and it's not because it's not it's it is in focus but what is in focus is in front of you so on my next two or three exposures that are actually nine images if it's three because you gotta combine the background is in focus and then if you go over that is in focus while the zone shifts and let me zoom out a little bit and then it goes all the way across to that so and then back there as you can tell is not in focus well this is so it's just kind of a, a little fun technique that I did to kind of give it a whole new perspective and I shot it at a really wide aperture so I could get that that good depth of field otherwise everything would be kind of in focus and not really give it a contrasty kind of look so that is my tutorial how to do HDR and photo stitching in Photoshop thanks for watching